Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at KZ's latest single dynamic driver set called the ZVX. So the shell is all metal and sort of reminiscent of the CXS. It has that hole through it and back vents and all metal build. So again, like that set, the, the metal shells are actually very, very nice. Same QDC connector that they've been using for years and uh, kind of an all metal nozzle, which is not the super small one that they use on occasion, but uh, actually a pretty reasonable one. And on the back, it does say ZVX as well. So let's kind of jump right into it. And we'll go through this one kind of quickly. And, and a lot of that is due to number one. So I think KZ sort of falls into a pattern of developing really nice drivers. And then they give you flavors of that driver. You know, slightly different tunings of a very similar driver. And I think ZVX and CXS, if they're not the same exact driver, they are very, very close. I think it is the legendary driver, but... I can't really confirm that, but it is probably is the same driver. And it just falls into this category of they're all good. CXS was good. ZVX is good. And, you know, you end up with this pattern of, well, the driver is actually pretty good. It sounds pretty competent, but the tuning is just a little off center. And people start to describe the, the sound on these sets as good for KZ, right? And... At, at the beginning, I think that sounded okay. I think as KZ was, tr was transitioning from big V-style sets and people were seeing that the tuning was being more aligned to maybe Harman style, you started to hear people say, oh, that was pretty good for, for KZ. It's not uh, metallic or shouty. You know, good for KZ. And um, that kind of lasted for a while. And now I think people are getting a little bit tired of it. And it's not really good enough to be good for KZ. It's got to stand out against lots of other sets that are in this 20 to $30 range. And I think that's where they're falling a little bit short is how to take this driver and these tunings and elevate them to where they compete with the more popular sets that we saw at the end of last year. So legendary driver, like I said, I think it is the same legendary driver of CXS. This one, what's new about it, actually has a Zobel network to control some of the tuning. And the question is, is that actually better? And maybe it is a step in the right direction, and probably for a future set it'll make a little more sense. But for right now, I, I would say it's just not clear that there's an advantage over what they did on CX, CXS. It just sounds like a cleaned up, slightly retuned version. Maybe a lot of it is just the shell shape because that shell shape was a little more was a little different and they weren't used to it. Acoustically, it was different. So it's really hard to figure out the advantages of the Zobel network and what it really did. And we'll take a little took a little look at what it actually does uh, in, a, in a minute or two. But the question is, like I just mentioned, they could focus on this Zobel network and tuning in this new style or continue tuning closer to ARIA, and that's sort of where this set falls in. You know, it's not all that far from ARIA, and we'll take a look at that. So if we look at this, the graphs of those side by side, you can kind of see where KZ fell into the levels that ARIA does on the base shelf. KZ usually does a crazy base shelf that's hitting about 75. So when they bring that down to ARIA levels, bring pin again down to ARIA levels, you know, the last remaining bit is is this whole thing, right? Instead of doing this high 8K, low upper treble, even it out and extend it almost the way they did it on PR1 Pro. That's essentially what they did there too. But they got to clean this, this whole bit right out here up and then the, it'll actually fall into place. But for some reason, they, they get really stuck on this. So we'll see. I think if they would just clean it that little bit, um, and then tune it like everyone else does with a treble that's closer to Aria. You know, you end up bumping into those twenty and thirty dollars sets instead of people referring to sets as uh, that's pretty good for KZ. So one side effect of this uh, circuit, the Zobel circuit, the treble changes with impedance. So if it sounds like Mr. Over, if it sounds like Mr. CX CXS, that was a little bright, kind of a little intense for me. Uh, try a different source because that one. This is what it looks like, um, really what happens when you change impedance on this guy. So ignore that for now. I think that's that's um, IFIs. That may be X base, or that may just be a weird artifact of IE match. But IE match is in the blue. 
So the red is stock, so stock impedance uh, on a normal ES100. Then you can see IA match adds a little more impedance and actually drops down this whole treble range down, you know, probably 1 dB. And then you can kind of see a 25 ohm impedance adapter would actually drop it down probably 2 or 3. I'm not sure what that number was. But that's kind of the gist of what the Zobel network was doing. It's uh, kind of adjusting this whole treble shelf, you know, up and down. And uh, they just picked some level that was uh, close to ARIA, which was probably a good move. But as I said, if this whole thing sounds a little more intense, try a different source, try your laptop, maybe your PC, because the impedance will, will move this uh, in, you know, in some direction. I wouldn't necessarily run out and get an impedance adapter just to hear a small change like that, but uh, do be aware that it will shift around a little bit. So sound. So slightly bright V. You know, I, I would have said the same thing on CXS or a cleaned up retuned CXS, like I just mentioned, in a shell that works better for me. I do think there is something to that CXS shell that I love the look of it, but uh, didn't really work for me in my ear and how that set sounded. Something was just off. But, um, you know, I do think it, it is the same driver, and I do think there is some of that bright DNA to it that is still lurking inside the ZVX. So the bass... Dropping into levels like everyone else, plus that competent driver, equals good bass, right? That's that's essentially what you get here. KZ is used to doing this crazy bass shelf, and it tends to turn a competent driver into something that sounds either boomy or bleeding, and when they hit the right level, that just works for popular music, or, you know, that's similar to Aria, or similar to the other 10, cents or 10 sets that came out. Recently, you know, magically good things happen and the bass sounds pretty good. And, uh, you know, you get, you get away from that boom and that bleed section. So the treble. So like I was talking about, it's... Um, KZ has a few versions of the V-shaped treble. Um, they either boost into the lower, mid, or upper treble. So if you remember a set like DQS, where I said that was a nice, very traditional V-shaped uh, KZ set... That was a big bump between 2 and 5. I think that was at about 12 dB. Very traditional KZ-style tuning, bump pin again. You end up with a nice V-shaped set, and you give it a nice big bass shelf, and you end up with a balanced V, and that's exactly what that one was. And then you look at sets like Lyra, CXS, and ZVX, and you end up with this... Um, yeah, let's do this one. Um... Yeah, that's fine. So what you end up with is some 8K energy. And you can call that coupler resonance, but there's actually energy there. And for people like me who are sensitive to this bit right here, an elevated, you know, sort of mid-treble bit like that, it, it tends to color everything backwards. And it's really hard to hear beyond this because it's, you get very sensitive to it. And whether you hear that as sibilance or just an overall brightness, it ends up turning everything else sort of bright. And that's exactly what happened on ZVX. That's what happened on CXS. That's what happened on Lyra. I'm just sensitive to it. Not everyone is sensitive to it. Some people are more sensitive to that lower bit, like I just mentioned. Some people are very sensitive to upper treble. And if you look at a set like EDX Ultra or PR1 Pro, those had very big bumps all the way out there in, in the upper treble range. So KZ tends to fall into a pattern of one of these three, and uh, for me, it's just about knowing your fatigue point. So I can do I can do the energetic pinna. I think DQS worked actually pretty well for me because it balances out with the bass, but the AK for me is just more fatiguing, and it tends to take the mids off natural. You end up with this brighter, sharper. There's some apparent detail to it, but it really masks the upper treble and stage, and you end up sort of in this weird you know, midway between it sounding a little more sharper and detailed, but not actually hearing a lot of more detail to it. It's kind of weird. I, I call it apparent detail. It sounds sharp, but if you actually listen for details, it's not exactly there. So the mids, like I was just saying, just colored by the treble into a slightly bright, energetic, a bit in your face. It, it really takes things really close. Um, kind of ruins the stage a bit. Everything kind of falls right back into your face because it's a little brighter. 
um, the more relaxed treble and mids of, of that Harmon pack, those $20 and $30 recent sets, it just works better for me in long sessions. This one sounds fine in, in short sessions, though. And the stage, like I said, almost back to where they were, but the treble was just off again. And this, this 8K bit, you know, the way this adds a bunch of brightness to it and it colors everything back here, moves everything a little forward in your face, you really lose the depth and you lose the height because you're not hearing... It's sort of masking what's happening out in the upper treble as well. And uh, so, yeah, it's sort of a little bit a step better than CS CXS in some cases. But then some tracks, so you're kind of right back where it was, where there's really just not enough height to it. And I think just balancing out that treble so it's a little closer to where Aria is, you know, we just a better balance would get that height and depth uh, where it needs to compete with these other sets that are in that $20 and $30 range. So... That's what I got on ZVX, so thank you again for tuning in, and I will see you next time.